Welcome to SVSU Red Alert, your weekly update on Saginaw Valley State University Athletics. I'm your host, J.J. Bain. The SVSU football team lost a tough one in Indianapolis, but they don't have much time to think about that as they have a short week as they get ready for their nationally televised game against Ashland. We'll review all that with SVSU head coach Jim Collins, and we'll get an update on men's and women's cross country with head coach Rod Cowan. That's all ahead on this edition of SVSU Red Alert. Welcome back to SVSU Red Alert. For the second week in a row, the SVSU football team went on the road. This time they were unable to return with a victory as they fell to Indianapolis by a score of 29-20. I'm joined by SVSU head coach Jim Collins. And coach, uh, this is one of those that, you know, made some plays, were able to come back from a deficit, but ultimately couldn't finish it off. Well, ultimately we lost the turnover battle and we lost it big because they converted two turnovers into scores. And you're not going to win too many games when that happens. And unfortunately, we, we made some mistakes that cost us the game. But, you know, there's not a lot of time to think about it. we got to bounce back quick this week. Yeah, you really do. I mean, you always want to put a loss behind you. But this one, you almost had to do that by the time you got on the bus driving home from Indy, didn't you? Exactly. And, and, and you know, the good thing about it also is the fact that we practiced the day after the game. We usually have the day off the day after a game. But because of the short week, had to practice this week. And I think that was good to get it out of our players' mind and get them focused on the next one. This was a game where, again, as you talked about, Indianapolis able to get some points from their defense, but even when they got the lead, they were ahead 16-3 at one point. You came back, scored 17 unanswered points to take the lead at 20-16, to and looked like you had some momentum at that point. We did. Our defense played well all day. I thought they did a great job of keeping Indianapolis out of the end zone for three quarters. We, we did that. Uh, you know, it's just unfortunate we're not able to convert that game to a win. We make a crucial mistake in the fourth quarter with an interception that got returned for a touchdown, and that put it at a nine-point game and made it tough for us to get back in it. But I think we showed a lot of character on the road, second week in a row, down 16-3. to To be able to battle back and get back in that game was really important to us. We just didn't do the things in the fourth quarter it takes to win. And you also were able to get a turnover yourself, which is something Indianapolis, you know, astonishingly through the previous six weeks had not committed even one turnover, but Jeff Heath came up with a big interception for you. That was a big play simply because that's what got us the lead. When we scored right after that, we converted that to points. We had other opportunities in that game. There was a couple of balls that hit the ground. that We had some fumble recovery opportunities and didn't come up with the football. It was really good to see Jeff get that interception. And that was the first interception by our secondary all year. So that, that kind of got that monkey off their back. And now I think able to focus on, on this next one. And we'll take a look at the highlights from the game against Indianapolis. Uh, a few of them to show here, including uh, another pretty good week for your field goal kicker, Scott Stanford. It, it was good to match scores with them right out of the gate. You know, they went down and scored on their first drive, and, and, and we were able to do the same thing with a field goal. And then, uh, and, and then this, you know, we're down 16-3 to at this point. They had just scored on an interception return, and we came right back with that big play. And I think that, you know, kind of took the wind out of their sails and gave us some momentum back. Nicolina with a 79-yard touchdown reception there. And then here, a big sack for your defense. Brandon Williams able to get it when he rushed just three. Once again, I thought putting pressure on their quarterback, we talked about that last week. We knew that was going to be one of the keys. And, you know, that, that, I think keeping them out of the end zone like we did was, it was a great accomplishment, you know, for those first three quarters from our defense. But I think, I, I think ultimately, you know, you got to do things late in the game to win it. Losing the turnover battle, we mentioned, that was a factor. But it was good to see us make those type of plays right there, pressure their quarterback, get interceptions, create turnovers, and then at the same time protect our quarterback. Just got to put things together with the turnovers. And early in the season, you were able to overcome some of those games where you lost the turnover margin. This one you couldn't, especially because they converted them directly into points because this is a game where you outgained Indianapolis and had a lot of other things that worked in your favor. But as you said, tough to overcome those situations. Yeah, especially when they turn you know, immediately into points. It's one thing when you, when you put your defense back on the field and the defense has an opportunity to fight and scratch and claw to prevent them from scoring. But when you give it to them that easily, 
those are tough things to overcome. And, and I really felt confident uh, for three quarters that we were going to be able to do it. But then again, late in that game, we just couldn't make those plays. And it was disappointing, but I think we'll learn a lot from it. And uh, it will be a better team for it. What was the difference in terms of the defense being able to come up with those big plays? Because the red zone defense, I thought, was quite good because, as you said, early in the game, Indy was able to move the ball, but every time they had to settle for a field goal try. I thought we had a great plan. You know, we, we came up with some different pressure packages, uh, didn't bring as many people, but still were able to pressure the passer with some different fronts and, and, and movements up front with some stunts. The other thing we did a great job of is our guys stuck with their players in the secondary. We, we were playing mostly cover two. And, you know, with, with some of the adjustments we, we made in cover two coming off of the Michigan Tech game, I think they were really effective. You also were able to have some success running the ball. We saw the one run, uh, run from Tim Hogue. He was able to fill in and I think had 82 yards rushing for you without that many carries. You, you know, and that's one of the things you look back and you say we probably should have ran it a few more times. I, I thought we could have been a little bit more persistent with the run, but we really didn't have a lot of plays, a lot of opportunities. Uh, we, I think we only ran about 59 plays, and, and, and it was a good balance run to pass, but we've got to be able to run the ball more effectively and more often, and, and that's got to be part of our plan from here on in. And another game where the offensive line doesn't allow a sack, so it's an opportunity for you to have some time in the passing games. As you saw in that pass to Galena, that took a long time to develop, but Jennings had good protection. He had great protection, and the O-line did a great job. And really, if you go back and evaluate it, the, the interceptions were not because of pressures. He had time to throw. Uh, you know, it was just unfortunate that we were able to two balls came out of our receiver's hands right into their defender on uh, two of the interceptions. The other one was just a bad read, but, but they weren't forced because of pressure. And that's good to see our O-line consistently able to give him the protection he needs. And now you just got to turn around and put that one behind you because, again, you play on Saturday night and then you have to turn around and play again on Thursday. You know, the tough part of it is the long trip back from Indianapolis, obviously, but I, you looked in the back of the bus and our guys were sleeping, so they got their sleep Saturday night and they came back on Sunday ready to go. Well, hopefully that bodes well for Ashland. We'll have a preview of that one a little bit later on. When we come back, we'll be joined by SVSU linebackers coach Tesfa Smith. That's next on SVSU Red Alert. This week's Spring Hill Suites Male Athlete of the Week is Lachlan Savage. Savage, a sophomore on the SVSU men's soccer team, tallied two goals on the 5-1 victory over Lake Erie College on Friday, 10-14. Savage leads the team in goals with five and is fifth on the team in shots on goal with 11. The Cardinals men are now 9-2-3 and, and sit in second place in the GLIAC with a 5-2-2 record. Lachlan Savage, your Spring Hill Suites Male Athlete of the Week. Welcome back to SVSU Red Alert. I'm joined now by SVSU linebackers coach Tesfa Smith. Tesfa, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, JJ. And you get to know your guys really well this year because there just aren't as many linebackers this year <laughs> with the way that the defense has been reshuffled. Well, yeah, we kind of changed our defense to a 4-2 nickel, so we play two linebackers now. And uh, so, you know, it's, it was intended because of the uh, lack of depth we had at the linebacker spot um, to fill that void. It was a big void at the same spot, and we just figured that it would be better um, for our linebackers if we just played them in the box and get a DB, extra DB on the field. And it's actually worked out really well. It has simplified the defense um, a lot for our linebackers and allowed them to just run around um, and play in the box rather than playing in space more. So. So it's an adjustment, but I know you had the spring as well to put that in, mm -hmm. and, and that makes a big difference. Oh, the spring was huge for us because it gave us you know, a time to really assess our, our uh, personnel at that spot. And, you know, what we realized is that, you know, the, both those linebacker spots, you know, we play a Mike and a Will, but, you know, it's both guys can play either position. So, you know, if we have an injury, we can move a guy around and all that. Coming into the season, Grant was our Will. He was our starting Will, but because of some injuries, we had to move him to Mike. He made the transition there, and we're good. We've been rolling since. So. And it seems as though as the season has gone along that guys have figured out their roles and are performing a little bit better. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we kind of had a tough one against um, two weeks ago against Hillsdale, and then we just went back to the basics, you know, about guys 
getting in their run fits and making sure that they're you know doing their job and not tr trying to do too much. And I think since then, you know, they've really improved, you know, not trying to do too much, but doing their job, you know, whether it's, you know, filling that gap or whether it's, you know, getting in pass coverage, you know, whether it's blitzing and scraping. So um, it's been really good. And you mentioned Grant Caserta. He's the name that a lot of people are familiar with because he's coming back now as a junior. But you've got some other guys that have had to step up for you this year. Oh, yeah. We had Brian Johnson, who um, played a little bit. Of, actually, didn't play a little bit. Actually started for us at Sam last year um, and then played quite a bit as a redshirt freshman. And then he's coming in um, and uh, started for us at Will these last you know, six games or five games, excuse me. Um, we had Ronnie Gallon, a transfer, come in who started the first game for us, but he's been hampered by some injuries. And then we've got some backups. You know, we've got uh, Murphy Wilson, who's our backup, Mike. And, you know, his his biggest negative is that he's playing in front of or behind Grant Caserta. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just, you know, you want to give him a break. But if Grant's rolling, you got to want to just stay in him there. We haven't had a chance where we could just roll those guys in or not. So, um, and then we had some freshmen that, that we've kind of got on the shelf and but are on the cusp of playing. But right now, they're just an injury away or two, but we're trying to hold their shirts. So. Yeah, you have to make sure that guys are ready to go if yeah. they're needed. Yeah. And I know it's been uh, interesting for you as well because you're coaching the linebackers again, but also Eugene Marv has come on the staff. Yeah. <laughs> What's it like working with him on a daily basis? Yeah, you know, it's been a blessing. You know, he, he brings a lot of energy. He brings a lot of knowledge of the game. Uh, you know, he was, he's just a football player, you know. So, you know, he's still learning, you know, um, our schemes and what we're trying to do. But he knows the basics, you know, how to take on blocks, how to defeat a block, how to read a play, you know, how to diagnose a play better, you know, how to take on a block, you know. And those little things that he brings in to the – put in, um, to the table for us. It's really helped our linebackers. And, you know, just play aggressive, you know. And if you don't know, just play – all out, you know, go hard, you know, and, you know, you get that from playing 11 years in the NFL. So. <laughs> and I would have to think that that helps, too, with guys uh, in terms of credibility. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, because when he talks, they listen. You know, he, he gave a good speech to us uh, in, the, in, the, in the locker room, and it was really good, got our guys fired up and all that. And, you know, that's what you like with him. He brings a lot of energy, you know. Not only does he bring energy, but he brings the knowledge of the game, and, you know, the kids look up to him and listen to him. And, you know, we're fortunate to have him with us on our staff. So. Well, hopefully the two of you continue to work well down the stretch and get some good results. Tesfa Smith, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, JJ. And when we come back, we'll be joined by SVSU men's and women's cross-country coach Rod Cowan. That's next on SVSU Red Alert. Saginaw Valley State University, where students learn in personal classroom settings and state-of-the-art labs. Where students make a difference in Michigan's Great Lakes Bay region. And study the world. A place where we celebrate Red Pride. Saginaw Valley State University. to SVSU Red Alert. I'm joined now by Rod Cowan, who coaches men's and women's cross country at SVSU. Rod, thanks for joining us. Thanks, JJ. Thanks for having me. And this is uh, the important time of the season for your squad as well, right? You're going into the GWIAC Championships this weekend. Yes, it is championship season. It's finally arrived, and uh, that's what we work for. All the summer miles, all the early uh, fall training. Uh, now it's time to go out and see uh, if, if our calculations, our prescriptions, our workouts, uh, we'll, we'll, we get a chance to go out and, and, and see if, uh, if it's good enough. And really, there is a lot of work that goes into trying to build up to be able to have your best performances late in the season, isn't there? Oh, for sure, for sure. Uh, we're a championship sport, uh, as I've said on many occasions. Uh, you know, we're not football, we're not basketball. We don't have to have so many wins in order to get into playoffs. All we have to do is make sure we're sharp come championship season, and that's basically for three meets. And so that's what you're getting geared for now. Talk about your team and how they perform, because you have had several meets leading up to this. Yes, we have. Uh, right now, the, uh, the men's team, um, 
they're not what we, they're not what we would like for them to be, uh, but they're working hard. Um, uh, the women's team, however, it, has done a phenomenal job thus far. We just hope that uh, they can continue and uh, continue to build off of each week uh, that we've had uh, so far. The uh, the guy again going back to the guys team, uh, I'm led by Tyler Noble, a uh, kid from Shepherd. Um, I've got a couple transfers, uh, Joey Borelli and Eric Spence have come on and, and done really well for us. Um, another one of my upperclassmen, uh, Greg Beatty, has done a terrific job. Uh, so on the men's side, again, we're, we're struggling a little bit, but uh, this week is the first week that uh, they, can, can, they can start to kind of climb out of that hole that they've been in, so, so to speak. Uh, on the women's side, uh, Lauren Hill, Megan Matures have certainly been up front for us. They've been the, the main... Uh, main catalyst, so to speak, for our team uh, thus far. Um, we've got some other upperclassmen, uh, Jeannie Hollerback, uh, Ashley Meyer, Alicia Wright. Uh, we've got some terrific, terrific freshmen, uh, Emily Short, uh, Chantel Fondren, uh, Tia Ames, Tori Pete, uh, some kids that have just done a phenomenal job for us. Uh, and so the task for the women is to continue to build all the success that they've had over the last couple meets. And uh, the women's team have won the last two meets that they've, that they've participated in. So uh, we, we feel really good about them going into conference. And so we're just hoping that we can ride that momentum, so to speak. And you talk about the depth, and that's really important in cross country as a sport because if you're able to have more people that finish higher in terms of their order of finish, that helps push other people down. Certainly it does. Certainly it does. Every, every place matters. Um, we, we like to think of it as the, as the ultimate team sport. Uh, you know, right now with baseball playoffs, uh, you know, you hear teams that have great pitching, you know, uh, that great pitcher that, that can go out on the mound and win your ball game. Well, in cross country, you know, we're, we're a pure team sport. One, you could have the one greatest kid in the country, um, but if he doesn't have two, three, four, and five to back him up, it's going to be a long day on the course for you. So we, we, we certainly are, are, are very much a team-oriented sport that certainly relies on, on all guys that take the starting line to get the job done. And really, it does take all of those workouts as well. Where I'll be driving in early in the morning and seeing them out there running to try and make sure that not only do you build up your endurance, but you're able to make sure that you've got that kick left in case there's somebody in front of you you have to catch. For sure, for sure. Um, uh, my distance coach, Ed Skrilunas, does a terrific job with the kids. Um, like you said, I mean, they're... Uh, a couple days a week, they'll do two a days. They'll come in Monday, Wednesday, Friday uh, in the morning and do some lifting and get some easy miles in. Then they'll come back again uh, in the afternoon uh, to get to get some more um, some more miles in. So really dedicated bunch of kids, um, you know. But but it goes all the way back to the summer um, preparation period where they're out on their own. They're away from us. Are they accountable? Are they disciplined? Are they doing the work that they're supposed to do on their own? Uh, and and for. for I'll say that we're blessed because we have a bunch of kids that are just addicted to running. And so you never have to worry about them out there getting, getting in miles. Sometimes we have to ask them not to run. <laughs> well, hopefully get them to run very well this weekend in the GLIAC Championships. Rod Cowan, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me, JJ. Appreciate it. And when we come back, we'll be rejoined by SVSU football coach Jim Collins. That's next on SVSU Red Alert. This week's Spring Hill Suites Female Athlete of the Week is Charlotte Wong. Wong, a sophomore on the SVSU tennis team, went 6-0 on the weekend as she won both of her number three singles matches and number two doubles matches. With the victories, the Cardinal Tennis Squad clinches the number eight seed in the upcoming 2011 GLIAC Women's Tennis Tournament, which starts on Friday, 10-21. Charlotte Wong, your Spring Hill Suites Female Athlete of the Week. Welcome back to SVSU Red Alert. The SVSU football team will make their national television debut for 2011 as the Cardinals host Ashland. The game will be carried by CBS Sports Network as well as Fox Sports Detroit, Fox Sports Ohio. So, Coach Collins, uh, I know you always want to play Bell well, but this is one of those that has a lot of extra attention paid to it. Exactly, and there's no doubt our players feel the same way about it. You know, they're going to get an opportunity to play on TV, not an opportunity that you get a lot in Division II. So, uh, everyone in our program is ready to make the most of it and really excited about it. 
and you're going to be taking on a Ashland team that has to be feeling pretty good about themselves because they were down by two touchdowns in the second half, came back and defeated a previously undefeated Wayne State team 20-17. to They had a huge win last week, really put them in the driver's seat as far as controlling their own destiny in the league, and, and we're kind of in the same boat. And if you look last spring when we made these – plans to play on national TV and you looked at the two teams, uh, what you really wanted was a game that was going to mean something in terms of the league standings, and it obviously does. And this is an Ashland team that it they've had some interesting games this year, too, that have gone very deep. I think their win over Indianapolis went four overtime, so uh, could be a barn burner. Well, and their Hillsdale game went three overtime. So they've been in a lot of close games. This past one almost went in overtime. Very similar to us, and that's really similar to the whole league. A lot of the games are going to come down and late in the game, overtime, fourth quarter, and you've got to be ready to win it. And, you know, we've done that four times, been able to do it, and two times we haven't. And, 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 but our team is a team that's seasoned. Our team is a team that understands and has the experience to go into those fourth quarter games and you know I think we've got what it takes to prevail but we've got to obviously make the plays and do the things right. How different is it in terms of game preparation when you have to turn around and play on Thursday as opposed to Saturday? Well it's extremely different because you don't you don't have a day off number one number two I, I don't think you can go as hard in practice you're not gonna be able to hit as hard on the short week because the recovery is different and, and then the other part of it is just you've got to condense your preparation in such a short period of time so uh, it, it, it's a little different but it's different for both teams and, and I think the team that handles it the best and is ready to play and, and, and then plays the best going to win. And this is an Ashland team that has uh, an experienced quarterback in Taylor Housewright who is uh, kind of a dual threat in terms of being able to pass well, but then also if the play breaks down, he's effective as a scrambler. Well, that's where he really hurt us last year. In our game last year, it, they were broken down plays where he scrambled, not predetermined quarterback runs, and he did a good job of it. So we've got to contain him. We've got to make sure we don't let him run loose on us. And then the other thing we've got to do is do a good job of preventing the big play. And, and when they've had a chance to make big plays, they've been successful offensively. And we're, you know, the times they haven't scored a lot of points is when they haven't had a lot of big plays. So we've got to do a great job against that type of stuff. And also, as you talked about, you didn't win the turnover battle against Indy, but you were able to force a turnover. You were able to get an interception for the second straight week. Does it seem like maybe the defense is being a little more opportunistic now? And, and, and you know, I, I think they've, once again, they've worked harder at it uh, in practice, and, and they've realized the opportunities. That they're not going to get a lot of opportunities. They've got to make the most of them. And, and I thought we did a great job of that on Saturday, and, and, and we've got to continue to do it. The key for us also is we've got to, we can't turn the ball over ourselves. We went two games without a turnover. We've got to get back into that mode. What do you do now to get this team ready to play on Ashland? And think about it at first as a football game and not as much about it being a spectacle because it's easy to fall into that trap. Well, I think it's very similar to our opening game against Ferris where we opened the game up. We had a huge crowd. There was all the festivities involved with it being the first night game at Saginaw Valley and, and I just think we, we're going to have excitement and the, the crowd and the energy is going to create the excitement for us but then we've got to get honed in and focused on the task at hand and that's winning the game. We've proven we can do that in, in those type of environments and we got to do it again. What do you need to do to make sure that your team also comes out with one of those things where you, you have a lot of energy but you also don't come out overhyped? Well, you know, that, that was the issue in the Ferris State game. I thought, you know, early in that game we were really hyped and we, we used a lot of energy up. But, you, you know, I, I think our guys now are experienced enough to understand the, the type of excitement and energy to play the game and, and not to get involved with the other stuff like the TV cameras and, and the crowd. And, and I expect with, with the group that we have now, the veteran leadership we've shown, that we'll be okay in that regard. Well, hopefully that proves true. We're all looking forward to it a great deal. Coach Collins, good luck against Ashland. Thanks, JJ. And we thank you for watching this edition of SVSU Red Alert.